Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time again for another devotion. Devotional. We are uh, staying in John chapter 14 for a while where he claims, Jesus is claiming the name truth for himself. John chapter 14, verse 6. Um, you'll notice my Bible. <coughs> I wanted to point out to you that this is the last, actually my Bible has, has portions of it, and you'll probably, you might have noticed it, where it's, it's just kind of falling apart. Um, and so I just kind of set those portions aside while I look at the, the Bible. But it, it, I heard somebody once say, once uh, somebody said that uh, it's okay when a Bible is falling apart, because usually when a Bible falls apart, its owner doesn't fall apart. So that's kind of interesting. But we're staying in John chapter uh, 14. Uh, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we once again pray over this word that uh, we, we've been meditating on. Jesus is the truth. We're asking that you would give us your grace and understanding uh, so that we might better live out your calling in our lives uh, these days. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, we're looking at Jesus as the truth and... Um, one of the things I was I kind of finished up yesterday's devotional by saying that we need to saturate saturate ourselves lives in in the truth because culture sometimes kind of veers away from <clears throat> the truth as God's word and it kind of defines its own its own truth. Um, somebody once said, and I don't know how true this is. I guess I, I've never really investigated, it, but uh, people who uh, are are uh, supposed to are who people who are in charge of finding counterfeit money, um, discerning counterfeit money, the, the best way to discern a counterfeit is to stay, uh, like they, they just kind of, they, they keep with the feel of the real thing. In other words, they, the more they're uh, kind of working with the real thing uh, as they feel it and they see it and they smell it and all that kind of thing, they're, they're just around the real thing all the time, it becomes easier for them <clears throat> to determine the counterfeit when they see it. So they're, they're staying with the real thing all the time, they're you know, dealing with money, and it's not, and it's not that they, they're always staying with counterfeits money so they can determine it, but they stay with the real stuff so that when they come across something counterfeit, they can, they can discern it. And I think there's a lot of truth about that in regards to our lives in the scriptures that um, it's, it would be good for us to stay in the truth, to read the truth, to get to know the, tr know the truth, to memorize the truth, to study the truth, to saturate ourselves in the truth, so that when a lie comes into our lives from society, we can discern the counterfeit because we know the genuine. And so I, I, that's once again my encouragement to you to, to stay in the word, uh, to keep reading it, you may not you may not always understand what the Bible is saying, you know, as you as you're reading day to day. And there's I know a lot of people who have started to read and they say, well, I don't understand that, so I'm not going to go any further. But what my practice has been throughout my Christian life, I've been a Christian uh, for since I was 18 years old, <clears throat> and um, I've, that's, I've been a Christian for uh, 30 30 years now. And so my practice has been to um, study God's Word, read God's Word, and, it, and it, when I get to those poor parts where I don't understand it, I read it, try to understand it. If I can't understand it, I just keep going and, and with, with the assurance that, uh, that one day I will understand it. That I make, I'll come back to it again. I'm not going to get hung up on that thing I don't understand. I'm not going to stall out because of a thing I don't understand. I'm going to keep on studying and keep on learning and keep on believing God for His truth to, to continue to, to come into my life. And that, that's my challenge to you. Don't give up uh, when you don't understand. As a matter of fact, is if you you know if you find a place where you're struggling, call me up. And people do call me up, and I'm glad to talk to them on the phone, or or you can come into the office, that kind of thing, and say I just don't get this part of God's word. And if I can help at all, that I'm not saying I'm the theologian of all theologians, but if I can help at all, I'll try to do that. Um, but most importantly, uh, what I'm saying is keep moving through God's Word. Keep on uh, letting God's Word uh, saturate your life. Let His truth saturate your life because of a constant approach to reading it daily. Um, I think you will benefit from it. Um, one of the things I said on Sunday morning <coughs> about truth 
is the fact that um, uh, we, we, we want to tell the truth. We want to be as honest as we can. We want to be as open and true as we can because, you know, there's a lot of us who fear truth because uh, if people knew the truth about us, then they would not want to be around us and they would think us, of us as fakes and frauds, um, hypocrites and those kind of things. And so there's a lot of us who avoid the truth. As a matter of fact, Jesus talks about in the, that in his ministry. He says that there are people who avoid the light. They're, they, they don't love the light because they're afraid of the light because when they come into the light, the light shows who they really are. And that's not something we want uh, to see. So there's a lot of there's a lot of that in all in all of us there's some of that in all of us where we don't want people to see necessarily who we really are and i said something on sunday morning about in the basically saying in the end it all comes out uh -uh. you know jesus says in the book of revelation five times to the seven churches he says i know your deeds i know your deeds i know your deeds i know your deeds that's an intimidating thing for Jesus to say to us and we know it's coming our way we know one day Jesus is going to look at us and he's going to see right through us he's going to say I know what you've been doing I know your life I, I, I am a perfect judge I know everything about you um, and that's intimidating that, that's, that's two things first of all it's fearful because you know we're going to be exposed and everybody you know is going to see us uh, for you know who we really are and that's a scary thing, but this, but it's also, and I was thinking about this the other day. It's also a comforting thing too on Judgment Day to know that all the truth is going to come out, because, and, and you got to get it, you got to see it this way. When it comes out, when all the truth comes out, and all of the, it's all, everything is visible for all of us to see. It's not just us who are going to be in the center of a bunch of people looking at us. Everybody's going to be in the same boat. Everybody's going to be in the same boat. Um, we're all, the whole of humanity, the whole human race, is going to be exposed to the same degree. We will see everyone's faults from start to finish. They'll see us, and we'll see them. And I don't think there's going to be anybody looking at anyone else and saying, I'm better than you. I think most of us are going to be comparing ourselves and our failures and our faults to the one who stands in judgment of us, to that pure, innocent, holy Christ who judges us. And so when we, when, you, know, the, the, you know, I think it calms our fears of judgment day to know that everyone's going to be in the, in the same boat. Um, one preacher said it like this. <clears throat> he said, um, he was preaching a sermon. He says, if, if you knew uh, uh, the truth about me, you would probably never listen to me again. And he said, but that's okay, because if I knew the truth about you, I'd probably never talk to you again. And so the person who said that had an understanding of the equity of justice, um, where the truth of the matter is, and I truly believe that I, I, you know, I don't have any, I guess I could be wrong about this. I, could, I guess there could be perfect people out there who never do anything wrong. But my guess is, my hunch is, that we're all in the same boat, we're all sinners, we're all fallen, we're all given to doing things that we're ashamed of doing. And for those people who seem sometimes to live the greatest and most holy lives, um, sometimes their, their secrets are the, are the deepest. Um, and that, you know, again, that may be true, may not be true. But I think if we think in terms of that we're all sinners and... Um, I really don't think that there's going to be a lot of, when it's all exposed and we're all vulnerable, it's everything's, everything's visible, I don't think there's going to be a lot of, hey, I got something over you because I know what you did. Because the reality is we'll all know what everyone has done. And to me, that is the nature of truth. And that's what God wants us to walk in. <laughs> that's a scary thing, but it's also a comforting thing. Um, when we walk in the truth that, uh, you know, yes, Yes, we're sinners, but the reality is everybody's sinners. We're all sinners. And the reality beyond that is that the truth has come to save us. Jesus has come to die for all of our sins and to have mercy on us. And I hope today that you've received that mercy and that you've accepted Jesus into your heart. Let's bow our heads together.
Father, I pray for everyone who's watching this uh, video clip. Uh, we ask in the name of Jesus that you'd be with them this day. And if they do need to be set free from something that makes them ashamed, I pray, Father God, that you would cover them with your love and with your mercy. The Bible's wording for that is that the blood of Jesus covers us and cleanses us from all sins, and that we are made the righteousness of God. And this is my prayer for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless Chapel Hill. We'll see you uh, very soon again. I'm sure it'll be a joy when we do. God bless.